Hello beautiful souls, we turn Amador here from Soul Healing Tribe and today I want to talk to you about lining. What is the lining um, that we often feel in our brains, like the sounds of lining that we can experience in our brain when we are going through spiritual awakening? So I'm not going to give you any scientific information about that or anything like that because I'm not a scientist, but I'm going to give you some of my personal experiences so that you can also see how this may relate to what you're going through if you're experiencing those sounds in the brain area. And, you know, I when I was going through my initial spiritual awakening, I was wondering, like, what the heck is going on? I am hearing sounds all the time in the middle of the night sometimes they were so loud that they will wake me up of my dream and i would be like oh my god did anybody earth hear that and i was looking outside to see if it was raining or something and anyways it was just a little crazy so i wasn't doing when i start when i had my first spiritual awakening i wasn't doing any plant medicine or anything like that so I knew it wasn't something outside of me. It had to be something that was happening within me because it was so loud sometimes that it would be like out of nowhere. And I'd be like, oh my God, what just happened? So when people are doing um, psychedelics or sacred plant medicine, they might also experience this because the medicine, uh, the the sacred plants are working with the brains and and they the different sacred plants that are that we use right to to heal ayahuasca san pedro iboga bufo um whatever it is um it has the potential to heal the different brain regions so that a lot of the times people could experience those lightning sounds after or during their ceremonies um or after their ceremonies and this this happened because this happens normally because the person the the medicine is working in and doing what it's supposed to do right unless it's successive and we're not going to get into that but if it, the medicine is working and doing what it's supposed to do and you are contemplating your healing and all of that the brain is going to do some of those, it's going to create some of those noises depending on how much energy is moving to allow for communication between the different regions of the brain to happen so that it may sound a little or you might feel it or it may be really loud or it may be so much that sometimes people end up in the hospital because they think they really do feel like they're having a me mental breakdown. I have a friend that recently, a business colleague that recently, um, was in Costa Rica, she took something and she ended up in she ended up in the ER because everything was happening so fast that she couldn't handle the amount of information coming into her body. So she ended up, she's in another state, she ended up in the ER and she was hospitalized for a couple of weeks, three weeks, uh, she said, two or three weeks. So this happens all the time. And this can happen even when you're not doing sacred plant medicine, especially if you're doing meditation. If you're doing deep meditations, at that time when I had that first spiritual awakening, I was meditating an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half in the evening before going to bed. Now, that may seem like a lot, but when you divide it, it's only an hour and a half, an hour and a half here, maybe two hours, sometimes even a little more, depending on what happened during the day that I felt like I needed to go in. And the reason why I felt that I needed to go in is because I felt like when I was going in and meditating and really allowing myself to be in my body, really allowing myself to experience I was asking things. I wasn't meditating just to let things go. I was meditating with an intention and i always been an advocate for meditating with a clear intention because that was the way that i it, i was taught through my dreams to do it that way and in contemplation and meditation those teachings were reinforced by let, guiding me to experience what happens when we do that so my technique for myself and the one that i always 
tell my clients is when you go into a meditation or a dream, always have an intention. An intention doesn't mean an expectation of how things are going to happen, but an intention of a question or something that you want to understand, um, maybe something that you're not understanding, what is preventing me from fully understanding X, Y, and Z, right? So we're going in with that clear intention so that we can anchor ourselves if we get lost and distracted. Once you become a master of this, I mean, I don't I haven't become one, but that, that's not what I'm trying to imply. But once you become more advanced, you can allow yourself just to be, but that takes so much energy and discipline that for a lot of people, it's just best to start with a clear intention because at least you know how to come back to the intention to anchor yourself in the experience, right? So anyway, anyways, I was meditating um, in an hour and a half in the morning, sometimes even longer, sometimes in the middle of the day because I have my own businesses so I could, you know, do my own thing. Or sometimes I will do X amount of in the morning before doing anything else and then spend the equal or more time in the evening before going to going to bed so my dreams will be intensified so i was meditating three hours at least three hours every day and i remember just feeling like that was the way that i could that i could feel that the that the gray cloud wasn't around because back then i had depression i i've been sharing my journey with you all and you if you've been listening you know that i suffer from depression when I was a child and I didn't know I didn't even know that depression was a thing okay like it wasn't a thing that we had in the vocabulary back then in my town like no I don't think anybody really knew what that meant so I just knew I felt different I felt off I felt like I was always in a dark cloud I was seeing things that I didn't want to see I was knowing things that I didn't want to know and I just felt like confused and betrayed by life. Um, if, I guess that would be the best way that I can explain that in a very short time. So I was feeling depressed. In order for me to avoid the cloud, I felt that when I was meditating, I could avoid that cloud. And when I would go in and I was experiencing those moments of clarity inside, which is why I became really basically, if that's a thing that leads to meditation, because I wanted to feel myself, right? And to contain that energy for later, it would stay a little, but it wouldn't stay permanently because I wasn't fully doing my healing journey back then. I was, I was successful in many areas but i wasn't successful at healing the childhood wounds and other past lives that i didn't know i had back then really so but it was good it was good to be able to go in and let the gray dark cloud go for whatever how long i ever i could that i felt like i was myself and then i will you know I will enjoy that so much. And I was able to do a lot of things that for a lot of people, it could take a lot of years. And I was just like, I'm in heaven, right? So anyways, um, I started feeling the, the eventually started feeling the lightning. And sometimes it was so strong that it just felt like my head was completely splitting several parts. Like I was like, oh my God, what just happened? And sometimes it was really scary because it didn't happen just once. It happened more, many, many times. Uh, I mean, I'm saying many, many times. And it started first, like, you know, when you get a little crack, crack, and I'm like, okay, what, what was that? And then the more I continue to meditate and, you know, months and years of meditation and so on. One day it was so loud. It was like, Psh, and I was like, oh my God, I think I died. Oh. Anyways, um, those sounds and those experiences really opened me up to, I was connecting with ancestors, with different energies. I was understanding things that were like, whoa, I didn't see that coming and things were making sense, but 
I was also contemplating, am I going crazy? Because I already had issues with that in childhood where I really didn't want to be crazy. And then when that started happening again, I really felt like oh, something is wrong here. Like something is really wrong and I don't know what to do and who am I going to share this with? And people are going to think I'm crazy. My family is going to think I'm crazy. I mean, you know, I already had um, my son Tyler was maybe a year or so or two old and I was just like, oh my God, what is going to happen? I was contemplating everything that could go wrong because I was like, something is wrong here with my head. So I started looking into, I started getting a lot of attraction into my ancestral lineage. And that's how that journey really took off with feeling that natural attraction to going back to my roots. And that's how my healing journey started. That's how I realized I had issues that I needed to work through. And eventually walked into a healing journey that Help me be completely different than who I was back then because I was a very different person back then, completely different. I mean, even seven years ago, even five years ago, even two years ago, even three months ago, I'm a different person. You know, every day that goes by, I just feel like, whoa, I didn't recognize. I don't recognize myself sometimes when I see some of the pictures. And sometimes I'm thinking that's a that must be a very old picture and it's only a few months old. So, you know, it's not... Like we have to wait 20 years to see the changes, right? Because when we're going through this process, it's, everything is happening and it's happening to the point where even last week, you're like, wow, I cannot believe I was at that point last week. Everything is happening just like a snowball and it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and you kind of lose a sense of who you were before. But when you see those parts of who you were, you're like, whoa. I mean, there is a little bit of thank goodness another person. There is another part that says, but if I was a person, maybe, you know, or, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I did those things to those people, or I cannot believe that I overcame so much, whatever is happening in your life, you know. And I think what, in my case, I started also asking myself, like, is this normal? Is this what I'm experiencing normal? Um, you know, at the beginning, obviously, you don't really have anyone to talk to most of the time. So, you know, you start reading a lot of books, you start doing some, you start trying to find answers. So in some ancestral cultures, this is where I want to go, <laughs> in some ancestral cultures, it was often uh, considered normal to experience abnormalities, abnormalities, that would be the right word, abnormalities or non-common behaviors that may have seen a little chaotic, a little psychotic, <laughs> um, and that when people were displaying those interesting behaviors, oh, that's the word that I was looking for, interesting, uncommon behaviors that maybe or that surely that was a sign that something spiritual is happening here and our ancestors of the earth definitely throughout different cultures kind of had a pretty good idea about this for some reason we lost track of that right like we lost a lot of it but we know that if you're going to different cultures and you research ancient cultures even 500 years ago cultures 300 years ago 5,000 10,000 that what was considered interesting and uncommon was a key characteristic that somebody was going through a major transition and potentially initiation process like a rite of passage so that they can become a uh, supernatural or spiritually gifted individual that can then become a shaman healer curandero right um whatever other terms are used that are not coming to mind so when people were displaying 
uncommon behaviors, key characteristics that were known. And the person maybe was a little manic and trying, you know, like talking too fast or saying things that didn't make sense to the elders. It was clear that something interesting spiritually was happening. So some of those cultures, for example, um, the Native American is a, definitely a good one that we can, I think we all can relate to because uh, they're still so close to who we are, right? And for many Native American tribes, um, the shamans, the medicine men, medicine women will go into a trance and go into intense visions and dreams, right? These experiences often were, they were just seeing like journeys to other realms. So talking about things that didn't make sense here was common. It's not like now in the U.S. or in our countries, um, anywhere, where, wherever you are, Latin America, Europe, South America, whatever, that when people start talking about things that people don't understand, they immediately start saying, oh, they must be going crazy or something is wrong here. We need to potentially hospitalize a person. And I had a client, um, she was a 72-year-old woman and she went she said one day i woke up and i was able to see shadow figures and when i was seeing the shadow figures i was seeing them everywhere i could see them in the grocery store when i went out for wax and i made a mistake and i told my grand my children and my children thought that I was simply just crazy. So they put me in a psych ward and I was hospitalized in a mental health institution for three weeks. And it was so crazy, so severe that I really thought that maybe I was going crazy. But then eventually the psychiatrist that was assigned to me for the second time, when he talked to me, and I explained to him what was happening. This psychiatrist apparently had some uh, sacred plant medicine experience. And he said, I don't think you're crazy. And I'm going to discharge you. So she got lucky because she had a psychiatrist that somehow in, in the recent months had an experience with ayahuasca and understood some of the things that she was saying. Now, if it, he didn't, he probably would have kept her there for, with medicine for who knows how long, right? So anyways, um, she wasn't suicidal or anything like that. They really didn't have a lot to, to hold her. And he recognized that she was having a spiritual awakening of sort and sort or awakening some of her natural spirit, spiritual abilities, right? So anyways, the reason why she did some of the sessions it was to better understand how to find balance. How do I find balance when I am able to see these things? What do I do with these things? So that was her healing journey uh, and also forgiving the children for not understanding her. So anyway, and so when you're going through this spiritual awakening and you, we know that some of these key characteristics that we display when we're going through that awakening that sometimes it feels like, oh my God, you know, I know there is always going to be a doubt. Could it, could it be possible that I'm going crazy because this is just so much and nobody really gets this. Nobody's going to be able to understand this. At least not the people around me. Uh, what's going to happen to me? If you have kids, you're going to worry about the kids. And I get it. I really do get it. But for one second, just Put that to the side a minute or two and consider what if I'm not going crazy? What if I am just really able to conceive beyond the illusion? This illusion I'm talking about, the illusion of being here in this 3D reality and no understanding who you, who you are, why you are, why are you here? Like those, so, some of those questions are the bigger questions that we're always asking ourselves and we come back over and over because there are layers. It's like a spiral. There are layers to this process. You don't wake up one day and you say, oh, I'm God. Without doing some of the healing work, that will just take you through some spiritual ego nonsense that can 
make you susceptible to the left if if you know what i mean i'm not going to go into that right now to the left rounds so in i think it was the greek culture that believe that divine messages were sometimes shown as mania like let me see if i can explain that better the it's like divine divine what would that be called madness yes that's the word divine madness this mania right like where messages in order this is like 21 divisions 21 divisions you channel a spirit you mount the spirit uh, or the lua and definitely the lua right that's the main focus but let's say it's just a regular spirit or whatever or a gede or whatever is coming through right and you mount the energy and you behave completely different than you are so there is some sort of many a madness characteristics to this to an outsider that doesn't understand right like oh my god they're just going crazy okay they're definitely crazy to an insider that understands the culture they know is a sacred experience for the most part and because of the sacredness even the elders in a spiritual ceremony when the drums are being played or the uh, prayers are being um, spoken or songs you know are happening and uh, the collective energy of the community that is gathering raises the energy and there is this sacredness to it to the point where you can feel the connection to everyone around you in that space and you feel such humbleness for being part of that experience and it opens your heart like it just opens your heart completely and it becomes like oh my god this is bliss this is you know you get the goosebumps you maybe even have a tear or two that you're trying to hide and you go into this beautiful expression of feeling the collective energy of that community to an outsider that looks like everybody's getting possessed this is the devil's work people are crazy we should call somebody to come and take them to the hospital right same thing happens with um is it i think is it the indians i forgot the name that they have for this it's very similar to 21 divisions and buru where they mount the spirit and they basically are channeling a spirit and the same thing that happens in 21 division and buru when they get mounted they also get mounted and they start behaving the same way. There is this experience of madness in that moment, such a high altar state of spiritual moment that people behave in a way that appears to be psychotic to an outsider, right? So we have the African cultures that does this. It's not just the Dominicans or the Cubans and Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans, Mexicans, but everybody the natives in the amazon just like the natives in dominican republic and all of the caribbean or trinidad and tobago and jamaica and all the african um countries and australians and the hawaii i mean everybody has some sort of cultural spiritual um wisdom that allows for this madness to be normal in that moment to an outsider it may look like something is wrong with these people and i need to run away but to the insider of the culture of that culture understand the sacredness of the experience their the the connection in that experience that the elders are there then to support in develop the best way that they can those people that are rising to that moment that are awakening to that moment and the reason why i wanted to bring this is because i think in a lot of it at least now 
especially in the U.S. In, and even in our own countries, if you're not in one of these spiritual practices and you start behaving in a certain way, even if you're a Dominican or Puerto Rican or Cuban or whatever, there is this sense of, okay, something is wrong here because we have, it's not, I'm not saying that we have to become 21 division priest, priestesses or Buru, Hugans, whatever, or you need to go into Ifa, you need to go into Spiritism, Palo, Santeria. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is when somebody's going through a spiritual awakening that has nothing to do with any of these spiritual practices, ancestral or non-ancestral, modern or non-modern, I'm, I'm talking about spiritual awakening in general. Spiritual awakening is for everyone. There is no division, there is no separation, it's an all-inclusive all-inclusive experience that can happen to all of us or any of us at any given time so when we go through that spiritual awakening experience and we we start noticing these behaviors in ourselves or others that are going through that instead of coming up with um terms or diagnosis that directly makes the experience into a negative one, can we shift that into a curiosity mindset or, or supportive mindset where we support the person? And let's say it's just us for the sake of this conversation. So how can I support myself and give myself some grace when I'm going through this experience? And every time that I want to say, oh my God, what if I'm crazy? What if I am okay allowing this experience? What is the best thing that could happen? What is it that could um, come off as a result of allowing this experience to develop, to develop naturally? So that I'm not constantly in fear of, because when we go into the negative, just like I did, oh my God, what if I'm crazy? Oh my God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna lose my child, or oh my God, I wanna die because I don't wanna be here, or um, oh my God, what are people gonna think of me? Well, I did that too. What are people gonna think of me besides my family, you know, my employees, clients, and so on? What, um, is this right? I'm working with the devil because I am seeing things now and understanding things that maybe it's coming from the left, maybe. So there is so much confusion, confusion and it is natural. It, it is natural to experience that confusion. I'm not saying that it's not, but what I'm asking you to do is that every time there is a negative concept that comes up, that is trying to eat at you, that you battle that experience or accept the experience by saying, and what, could happen if I believe and trust what I am experiencing. What is happening within my body when I experience X, Y, and Z? And if it feels in alignment, that we know that we're in the right track. If it feels like things are just really wrong when I go inside my body, and I have to be careful with that because sometimes when we have so much trauma from the past, our body doesn't know what is right and what is wrong because it's not trained to understand when everything is okay. So it may be reacting from the past wounds and the traumas and thinking this is a negative experience because my, my body is behaving in a way that is not nice. Like going into fear, trying to protect itself because it might be thinking it is the same thing that happened before. So I want to cautious, I want to caution you to, if you haven't worked with your body and if you haven't done a lot of your healing work, you're not going to understand how your body is really getting the real answers because you're still trapped in the past experiences of the wound so that you might not know without a trained person, right? What in this experience is really positive, neutral, or negative. So I just wanted to caution you in regard to that because I know it's easy to think, oh my God, oh my God, I'm getting afraid. I think I see a monster. And sometimes it's just 
a shadow aspect of the energies that we left behind because we were truly wounded or it may be a shadow entity or it may be something that is trying to communicate a message but because we don't know and we only see what we can perceive through our filter of consciousness that's going to sometimes um give us false yeses to when we think something bad is happening is what i'm saying so you might hear a voice and you might get really afraid because you're thinking oh my god i heard my grandparents say if i hear a voice you have to say you cannot say anything and if you say yes now they got you and the, you have to run for your life and maybe the name was just calling your attention to something in that moment that you were thinking something and then in the hearing the voice or something just gave you a clue like there is something there for you pay attention or whatever the message was so i know i talk so much sometimes i really want to make this short but sometimes i just go off on tangents and it really gets me aggravated so before i leave though when we're going through the spiritual awakening and we're feeling this severe emotional spiritual crisis definitely emotional it's like oh my god what is happening why do i feel all these feelings all at once I thought that I worked through this because I forgot about them and now they're coming back. Oh my God, what am I going to do? That's actually a really good thing because it means that your spirit, your soul, your spirit is working with you and your body to let you know, wake up, let's do this because we need to be in alignment and we cannot be in alignment until you work through these shadow experiences, these past experiences that are causing your spirit, your soul, not to be in alignment with you. So it's actually a really, really good thing. Now, the thing is that it's going to take time. And most of the time when we're going through that experience, we need someone to help us because we've been in it so long that we cannot see outside of it. So if you want to prolong the journey, if you want to wait years and years to do the work, you could do it by yourself. When you are serious about doing the work and really um, know that you're going to cheat through it, no, but you can become effective and efficient so that we don't spend years and years and years like I did. Because a lot of the work I did by myself and it took me years because I had to pick up a lot of these um, teachings and trainings and things in the dreams with, um, you know, in books, in practice and years and years and years of training when we could do i mean with my clients i'm special sometimes that they get so so amazing results in such a short time because sometimes i have worked with clients that have been a healing journey that were heavily traumatized i'm not going to say that it was just something small because some of these people were so heavily traumatized that it will take them multiple lifetimes to work through all the trauma that they experience i'm talking about people being trapped in basements by parents they were put in basements for a day two three three days in a basement in the dark okay that's severe trauma there physical abuse emotional abuse sexual abuse spiritual abuse to the point and i'm talking about spiritual abuse i think sometimes people think oh it, it was only spiritual that could not be bad but when you have spiritual abuse you also have to consider religious abuse so there is a lot there right there is so much that some of my clients have gone through that i am in disbelief that i've been able to help them to be honest because it's like i didn't think i could but somehow my spirit comes to guide because that's all i'm doing really guiding them to awaken that within them and it's i mean i'm just blown away and in gratitude that i get to work with people like that because they teach me every day they teach me how to be humble they teach me humility right they teach me how to connect at a true compassionate level there is nothing better than doing this work when you really feel that connection with other people. And when people come from very heavily traumatized environments, 
uh, um, upbringings that are so heavy and they've been in a journey for 30 something years some of these people have been some of my clients have been in a healing journey for 30 something years and they do work with me and they are experiencing a profound change and of course i believe that the reason why they come to me is because the all the work that they have done before got them to that point where they now can get the other side of the spiritual combined with the physical and i believe that it's not me to i mean honestly it's just then really allowing themselves to do the work but they are willing to be guided and that's key and in the healing journey when we want to do it effectively productively we can do a lot of work in, in a matter of months we don't have to wait years and years and years but the person has to be ready the person has to be at a point where they know i had enough of this i need to work through this i am done with this i am ready for the new me once two people get to the point where they don't feel that then they're not really there yet at least not to work with me so maybe you need to find a practitioner if you're not that desperate that they work at the beginning of the journey they're practitioners for different parts of the journey those that are ready to give you just the glimpses like this is what spiritual awakening is this is what's happening um maybe you hear this and they're going to give you a lot of content and a lot of maybe even divination and sessions to get you to the point where you're like oh maybe 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 so you might be asking yourself a lot of questions normally i come towards the end of the journey where the person is like done they they're done they want to be done with the emotional issues the spiritual issues that they've been carrying for this life and multiple lifetimes so there's always a purpose for all of us it's not i'm not saying that i'm the only one i'm saying there is a purpose and a reason why clients come to me when they're done and they just want to be done with it and there is a purpose for someone that wants to encourage people to go into the spiritual awakening they're giving people a lot of information it's a lot of information driven towards the end of the cycle we have to do a lot it's not information it's actually doing 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 so that we can all that energy that is trapping your body that we can release it so it becomes a very sacred beautiful experience but it's a lot of work i'm not gonna lie sometimes when i have my own sessions when i have um, my own healings i'm like oh my god just get me out and so and i'm doing it by myself um some of these things i'm doing by myself and i'm like i cannot believe that i was able to push myself through that because it was so heavy that if I didn't have the courage, I would have pulled down. And when I do work with other practitioners and they hold space for me, I feel that I cannot run away even if I want to. And the journeys may not be as deep because, you know, whatever for whatever reason, maybe I'm in my own way, maybe I am working something very specific so we're looking 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 so i tend to do a lot of work in in, in trans work whether it is in my body or outside of the body and i do that and i go very deep when i do for example transpersonal healing with a practitioner past life therapy age regression whatever it may be quantum healing there is um there is a level that we tend to go to to pull an experience right so sometimes it's not as deep as when i go into my own sessions but sometimes we need that practitioner because with that practitioner they their spirit is working with my spirits and they're communicating in a way especially if they're trained they're communicating in a way that they're going to be able to guide us to where we are not ready to go because they're going to push us and depending on the answers they're going to know okay we can continue or we need to take another strategy and i wanted to share that because i think sometimes people we we going back to the ancestral culture you know like the i talked about the african cultures the the african tribes where 
similar beliefs with the trans experiences happening, right? When people are being possessed and the shamans, the wish daughters and so on, they're going through an intense spiritual experience that may appear as magnets. Same thing happens in Hindu, happen in Greek, happen with the um, Norse, happen, I mean, pretty much with every culture. There is a sort of spiritual magnet that come when somebody's expanding their filter of consciousness and having a spiritual experience that to an outsider it may look a little crazy so all i want you to do is to be curious with yourself what if i allow myself some grace to experience what i'm experiencing through the lens of my highest being that I am, my inner wisdom that I am, my inner self that I am. What is that experience like when I experience what I am experiencing from a third person perspective, looking at it from the outside in, like I am witnessing myself or some people call it the higher self. So can I experience these madness from a higher self perspective and what is that experience like so that you can pull yourself away from the negative connotations that we have been led to arrive to simply because we don't understand what's happening because throughout time we have lost a lot of that sacredness of what it means to have a spiritual experience so what is what is it like to experience this spiritual awakening experience this spiritual moment from my higher self perspective or from the perspective of my inner wisdom or from the perspective of someone that you really admire that is in alignment with spiritual awakening that would be best because if it's somebody that you admire that is in business and you're trying to be a spiritual awakening they might not have a match hope that makes sense so yeah i think the 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 realization that you know it i don't want to get into a personal story another personal story but the realization that we are these divine being sometimes can come in as a little bit of spiritual ego and the reason why is because we we might not have we might have not dealt with our human pride and arrogance that may lead to a spiritual ego and the reason how this happens is when we have pride and arrogance is a mask and the mask is to protect us from feeling any certain way that we don't want to feel so the pride if it's not healthy and the arrogance that is not healthy right because arrogance is not healthy pride can be healthy you can have healthy error you can have any healthy emotion in, including sadness and shame but most of the time we have a negative connotation because we tend to be too prideful too arrogant so when we have too much pride and arrogance we have a mask there to cover the wounded parts that need to feel protected to not feel inferior right so or to feel special to feel wanted to feel belonging to feel whatever to feel seen so you have this mask when you go through a spiritual awakening if you haven't addressed the wounds that create the false sense of pride now you have a very inflated spiritual ego and the problem with that inflated spiritual ego is that it's so easy to be tricked by things of the dark, of the darkness, because with that false of false pride and arrogance, we have a lot of wounds that we haven't addressed, that we haven't healed. So we need to heal those wounds in order for us to really be in alignment and align the spiritual soulful self with the human self so that we can experience that higher state of consciousness always not only when we're meditating not only when we do plant medicine i think this is the reason why a lot of people get very um they always i don't want to say addicted because that's, there is a negative connotation to that and oh uh, what I want to say is sometimes people overdo 
doing sacred plant medicine or psychedelics because they haven't addressed the wounds. They're looking for the relief and that sometimes the medicine can work through us and do things and it can even last weeks or even months. But the moment something hits you again and punches that area that is wounded, you're back to the same. And therefore you feel like, oh my God, I need to do medicine again. That's not the case for everybody, but it's the case for a lot of people that I see. So I'm sharing from personal experience, working with clients that go through this. So I'm going to leave it here for now. Thank you so much and I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you.